thank you. My name is Piet van der Zander. I'm from Delft University of Technology. You heard it before. I think our university is, is a bit similar like your Technical University of uh, München. And uh, I want to talk about uh, the physical spaces and the, where we work on and also the influence that the last two years had on that. So uh, talking about education related qualities of spaces. Uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, the video conference uh, technologies that were brought in during the uh, uh, pandemic uh, have uh, helped us to, to overcome, uh, the, uh, let's say, the step from physical to online practices. And now we have a discussion that uh, most people think uh, that that is the infrastructure that we have to build on. Uh, and I do not agree. First of all, I want to say that I work at an IT uh, organization, the department. We work together with uh, real estate, uh, with education, with the facility management. So we have a broad aspect and a broad approach to all these uh, 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 spaces. Where do we go to? Uh, first, I want to show this uh, education spaces framework, which have three rows and three columns. And why three rows? Because uh, most of the uh, uh, talks tonight were about uh, uh, new online spaces, new forms, but we still need this frontal pedagogy. We need this uh, uh, instruction and lecture uh, lectures from from teachers to explain to us the formula writing uh, how do you uh, do the mathematics and how do you get an, a global uh, uh, introduction of these courses and of course a very important one is the participatory uh, practice these interactive way of working groups uh, where you do assignments uh, together and the most uh, difficult one is the joint problem solving where you have these uh, complex ill-structured uh, problems that you have to face with several uh, students with from different uh, disciplines uh, to make for instance a solar car or, a, or an extra uh, skeleton or other very uh, hard to design uh, projects. In the columns, you see the space domains, uh, physical, that's uh, where I'm uh, in. Uh, of course, uh, the online is uh, already for many years uh, in practice, and the hybrid one is more or less the forced one. And that is uh, uh, very hard. And, and I want to discuss why we must not think light about hybrid practices, because uh, what you see now is uh, since the last two years, many companies came in and they all have their what they call hybrid solutions for us as higher education. But I don't think so, because a learning activity is not the same as talking in a meeting. And all these equipment uh, do only have one video channel and one audio channel. And if you work in groups or you work uh, with uh, different classes uh, or different uh, places, different locations, you really need more uh, video streams, uh, more audio streams, and you need to cope with that. And that's the next one because there are so many cues coming in, how can this teaching staff deal with that? And of course you say, uh, oh, we do some teaching assistance, uh, but as a teacher, okay, you want help in the beginning, but you do not want to be dependent on the teaching assistant because you want to be in charge yourself. Uh, the next question for me is, uh, how can these physical classes, uh, uh, they do support uh, this, this very hard, uh, project teams, but how do you shift those into the hybrid domain? I can't see it today, but uh, I, I'm open for uh, new ideas. And in the other domain, the online domain, so many things, uh, and we saw some examples uh, uh, tonight about augmented and virtual reality, and how do you shift that into this hybrid domain? So there are a lot of things to uh, think about. Uh, they are still unanswered. And uh, my question would be, okay, let's think about those things, but also look at today. How are our present teaching and learning spaces doing? Uh, are they up to date or are they still yesterday's, if I may 
uh, use that word because I see many uh, institutions and many other uh, uh, universities still having uh, very old-fashioned uh, classrooms and, uh, uh, and and lecture halls and other things while they are focusing on just one new uh, interactive space and their installed base of about tens of uh, about uh, sometimes hundreds of education spaces still are in this yesterday state so my question would be uh, i have three questions uh, can you read the subject matter uh, in this uh, normal space because if you have uh, done that then you can uh, easily let's say make the transformation into the hybrid domain uh, the the second one is about ergonomics can you sit there all day and of course can you hear the uh, teacher talking um, so my advice would be start by checking this current uh, qualitative situation uh, for instance it's a simple question do you have enough power sockets in place because students cannot do without it uh, can you read the subject matter in the back row? Because what I see all the time is that characters are too small. And if I go to an optician and I want to buy new glasses, then I expect to have 100% visual acuity. So why is that not in most of the lecture halls and classroom today? It's about character recognition. If you see the formulas for the first time in new, your new math classes, you really have to discern these strange new char uh, Greek characters instead of your word recognition in your, in your native language. It's totally different uh, if you have this 100% visual acuity or only 60. Uh, next to that, of course, uh, it depends on where you are in the uh, classroom, uh, but uh, can you see it well? Because there is only a very tiny spot in your eyes, about 30 degrees wide and 10 degrees high, to follow and discern this character. So you really had to follow these sentences and the lines. And if you are in the first row uh, and your skull hits your spine uh, within 25 degrees, uh, then you are... Uh, really straight, stretching your back and you don't want to have that in these two hour blocks all day uh, it's not only horizontal it's also vertical of course uh, because your neck strains after 35 degrees and uh, you, then you uh, turn your back over and that's why we always advise in flat level classrooms uh, take revolving chairs turnable chairs so you don't have any back uh, complaints uh, from the students any longer and if you have an amphitheater uh, do it with a radius so uh, the people at the sides can really focus more easily to the central screen uh, in flat level holes, uh, is the screen readable from all the places? Is the, the baseline or the underside of the screen, is, is it on the, on the right uh, position? And uh, what do you think about all sort of constructions uh, that we have? And the lighting, I see it so many times that the lighting really uh, de uh, destroys the quality, the, the, the image. And... Uh, what do you think about when the sun comes in, in in spring and in autumn? I see it all the time that the it, it's just forgotten. And if you know it beforehand, then it's easily uh, to, to take care within your building. But afterwards, it takes uh, it costs lots of money. Uh, of course, the acoustics uh, and uh, the climate. Uh, about the acoustics, I will come uh, back to it in a minute. Uh, but all these. Uh, uh, pieces come up to uh, what we call a perceived image quality at the end. And that's what we see as a student in class. And we can measure the quality of it. And if we follow some uh, standards from AVIXA, that is the World Trade Organization of AV, then we can grab figures of it and we can uh, improve it or not, of course. But uh, just to have a little uh, ec uh, example, this is my own spine. And on the left side, uh, maybe you see it, I, I have a hernia over there, uh, but you don't see it on the right side. And up here are the contrast, the system contrast ratios. So although you have very fine details as a teacher, but the system in the classroom is, is 
not good, then you lose all the details of your fine work. Uh, I want to say something about the sound levels because uh, we have uh, uh, buildings that are most of the time a few decades old and they were developed at that time with uh, without voice amplification. It wasn't there. Uh, everybody uh, talked just uh, in the classroom, but today voice amplification is standard not only uh, to to amplify the voice but also to record lecture capture etc uh, what we also see is that presentations had uh, more videos more audio and if you have a proper sound system then there is much more uh, uh, acoustic sound within the classroom and uh, next to these active learning practices because if you uh, uh, compare uh, discussions in, uh, in, in in a restaurant then you have this this extra noise about it and all these things count to it and you hear it in the uh, space next doors and if you are having a very concentrating class where you have to peer for the formulas and you have the sound on your left ear uh, it's not that nice so uh, really uh, think those things over and with new buildings we have to take care of that too uh, what i want to say is uh, uh, just what uh, churchill said in his days we shape our buildings and afterwards uh, our buildings shape us and what he wants to say is okay we got to do we have to do with what we have and we fit in and okay if this ceiling is too low then we can only have a lower screen or a, a smaller screen if there are pillars then we cannot use those corners in 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 that room etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, but that is just the physical constraints of the space but also the affordances the uh, technologies and the, uh, the possibilities that must come in to uh, support hybrid or online or other mixed practices uh, they must be there beforehand because if they are not there teachers cannot use it and educational change will not come forward and you always have this chicken egg discussion where you want to ask all the teachers what do you need but the answer is always uh, what they need on that day on and not uh, thinking about tomorrow's new practices so I want to conclude with this last uh, uh, slide. Uh, think about the, the quality of the education spaces of today and make them up to date to today. And uh, uh, let's move from the yesterday's places, uh, but at the same time, think about with infrastructure, do you need for certain classes? If you do have uh, a specifically uh, uh, practices that you need on campus, they are totally different than the practice that you need online. So you have another infrastructure for that probably, although a networking uh, uh, does help all the way, especially if you want to combine this campus and uh, online into some sort of hybrid uh, practices. So I want to stress again, think about today's quality first before you go forward.